In this video, I want to show you the, the steps involved in beginning a new AutoCAD uh, drawing, and this will be kind of a step-by-step -step process, and you can follow along, maybe pause the video if you need to. So I'm looking at my screen. I've just opened up. I've just begun a new drawing in AutoCAD, and up here on the title line, you can see it says Drawing1.dwg. And one of the things that I notice when I look at this is I have my ribbon and all the tabs of the ribbon. I'm using AutoCAD 2013 here. Now, there is a um, another menu that I like to have up. And uh, the way you turn this uh, menu on is click inside your command line. Now, the command line is loaded right down here. You can just uh, left-click your mouse in there. And then you're going to type in menu bar. And you're going to type this as one word. So it's M-E-N-U. B A R and press enter. And you'll see that the new value for the menu bar is defaulting to zero and what we want to do is type a one and press enter. When I do that, it's going to give me some extra tools up here that are really helpful uh, for creating AutoCAD drawings. The next thing I want to do is look near the bottom of my screen. This is called the status bar and you can see there are a group of icons down here and for most newcomers they don't know what those icons mean. So I'm going to change those from icons to words. And so an easy way to do that is to go to the third one over, which is called Grid Display, and right-click the mouse. And you'll see where it says Use Icons. Just uncheck that, and it will replace all of those with words. Now I'm going to drag my screen down now. That'll make it a little bit larger. OK, the next step that I want to do is turn on some toolbars. Now. Um, I already have a draw tab up here that has a lot of draw tools like uh, line, circle, arc, and then I have a modify which has move and erase and rotate and some other things like that. Uh, but one thing I like to do with beginners is to show them how to turn on the traditional AutoCAD toolbars as well. And you do this by going across and finding your view tab and picking on that and then going over here on the very far right where it says toolbars and pick on that and pick AutoCAD and selecting draw and that will place the draw toolbar right over there and the first tool on that is the line command now the next way that I can turn on toolbars if I want is just move my mouse over here onto that toolbar and right click the mouse and at that point I'm going to select the modify toolbar and uh, it kind of went below that, so I'm going to drag it out. And I'm dragging on that gray bar right there. I'm just picking, holding down with my first button of my mouse. I'm going to drag it right over here to the side and let go. And it will dock right up against the draw toolbar. So I have the modify toolbar and the draw toolbar. Actually, that one jumped over the other, so I'm going to drag that back. So I have the draw toolbar on the far left, the modify uh, next to that. Now I can right click my mouse again. This time I'm going to turn on the Object Snap toolbar, and again, it jumped down there, so I'm going to drag it out, put it right over here next to that. And the last toolbar, I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go turn on the Dimension toolbar. So I'm going to go find the Ds there, and so now I have the Draw, the Modify, um, the... Actually, this guy jumped around again. I'm going to pull that one out. So I have... I'm going to put the Draw over there. Okay, so I've got... <laughs> I know this seems crazy for beginners, but this is the way things happen when you first up. So I have draw. Here's my modify. I'm going to drag that over there. There's my dimension. And then my last one here is my object snap. I'm going to click it right there. Plus that shows you that things don't always happen the way you want them to in AutoCAD. So you have to hang in there. All right, I'm going to go back and click on the home tab again of the ribbon. So I can find the line command right here or I can find the line command on my draw toolbar and uh, I can type L and press enter that will also put me in the line command and uh, there are other ways I can get into that alright now that I have the basic setup done what I want to look at um, is the way that I have my setup for doing the drawing that I want to do so I'm going to click on format and the first thing I want to do is set the units for the type of drawing that I'm making so I'm going to pick on units and the units dialog box will open up and the the type of length unit is the important one here I'm gonna pick on the down arrow and show you what my options are I have architectural decimal engineering and so on now decimal gives you uh, increments that are 
set to where you have one place on the left and up to four places on the right of precision, but you can increase this up to eight places to the right. And uh, usually we don't need to do that. And all this is doing when I set this precision is it's telling me that when I type in a command at what point it's going to round that, uh, that dimension. So if I try to type in a four place uh, uh, dimension with a three place precision it's going to round it after the third uh, number that I enter. Now decimal drawings are good whenever you're doing uh, mechanical drawings and those sorts of things. If you're going to do an architectural drawing, you want to come over here and pick on the architectural setting. And what this switches over to is increments of feet and inches. And in this case, my precision is set to 1 8 inch. And then that's the point at which it would round. I could pick on the down arrow. I could make it round at 1 16th or 1 32nd of an inch. And uh, what engineering scale, what engineering units do, you might think that these would be used to draw mechanical drawings, but what they do is give you feet and decimal inches. Now, I'm going to go back to decimal. And you'll notice that these are decimal units, but there's no inch mark involved because I could use this for just about anything that, that uh, I wanted that I was going to type in uh, that required decimal units and uh, then I just have to keep that straight sort of in my mind whether I was working in inches or millimeters or miles or light years or whatever it was that I wanted to work in. So we're going to keep, I'm going to keep this at decimal, set this to three places and pick OK. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to format. Now that I've got my units set, I'm going to go click on drawing limits. And what you're going to see is that in the command line it's going to say limits, specify the lower left, and it's going to say 0 comma 0. Now I want my, z my lower left corner of my drawing, which is represented right over here by my UCS icon, to be 0 comma 0. That's the coordinate for it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and press enter, and that will allow me to accept the defaults for that. And now it asks me for the limits of the upper right corner of my screen, and you can say, see that it's defaulting to 12 comma 9. I'm going to type in 24 comma 18 and press enter and then I'm going to do what's called a zoom all. I'm going to type Z and enter and A and enter and uh, what AutoCAD does is it zooms my entire screen. Now what I've done is I've set a drawing area that begins at 0, 0 and way over here on the on the right hand side and up near the top you can see well you can't see unless you look right here at the coordinate readout that moves across there. You can see that eventually I'm over around where 24 by 18 would be if on the X and Y axis. So that gives you an idea of how large things are that you're drawing and sort of sets the proportion for your drawing. The next thing that I want to do is to create some layers because in AutoCAD we always draw in layers and my layers are all right here inside this layer tab and I want to show you something. When you open a new drawing in AutoCAD AutoCAD gives you one free layer and it's called layer 0. If I pick on the down arrow, AutoCAD will show me all the layers that I have available and like I said, all I have available is layer 0. So let me show you how to make some new layers. You're going to go up to this button right here that's called the Layer Properties Manager. You pick on that and it's going to open up this dialog box. Now, if I want to make a new layer, there's an icon right here. The new layer icon, I'm going to click on that and what it does is it makes a copy of the uh, layer that was highlighted that was above it and since that there was only one layer that was layer 0 and it put it right here and under name it says layer 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type visible and uh, the reason I'm going to call this visible because I'm going to draw my visible lines or object lines on this layer and uh, the other thing I want to do about this layer, what I want to change about it, is the color of this layer. So I'm going to pick on where it says white right here. I'm going to select on that. That's going to open up a color matrix. And where I'm going to pick a color is from down here, where my sort of my primary colors. And I'm going to pick on red and select OK. So now anything that's drawn on the visible layer is going to be red. The line type is going to be a continuous line, so it won't, it won't have any dashes in it or anything like that. And under def uh, line weight, it says right now that the uh, line weight is default. I'm going to pick on this, and it's going to open up a dialog box. And I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to set that to 0.6 millimeters and pick OK. 
So now any line that's drawn on the visible layer is going to be thicker than any line that's drawn on the zero layer, which says it has default thickness. And you can kind of see the relative thicknesses there. All right, I'm going to make another new layer. I'm going to pick right here. And this layer I'm going to call hidden. H I, I didn't get my H in there. H I D D E N. I'm going to change its color to blue and pick OK. I'm going to pick its line type because it's a hidden line. I don't want it to be continuous. I'm going to pick on this. It's going to open up a dialog box. And I'm going to see that I don't have a line type of hidden to select. And this is not a big problem. I just pick on the load button, which opens up another dialog log box. Scroll down into the H's. Go find hidden. Pick OK. And now I see that I have hidden as an option. So I'm going to select hidden. Pick OK. And now it assigns a hidden line to that. And the last thing I want to do is change my line width back to default line weight. I'm going to pick OK. Now, the reason why this came out blue and or red and continuous and 0.6 when I first made this layer is that the last layer that I had made was still active or had been selected, so it just made a copy of all those settings over here. I'm going to make another layer. And this one I'm going to name Center. And I'm going to change the color of that layer to green and pick OK. I'm going to pick on the line type and I'm going to go Load. And these are in alphabetical order. Go down to where I see the C's and Center. Pick on Center. Pick OK. Select Center and pick OK. And uh, I'm going to go with the default line thickness on that. And next, I'm going to pick on this last one right here, and I'm going to set a text layer, T-E-X-T. -E I'm going to keep that green. I don't want it to be a center layer I want it, or a center line. I want it to be continuous. I'm going to pick on OK. And uh, with that, I've just created four new layers to go along with layer 0. Now, layer 0 has a check mark by it, which means that it's my current layer which means that anything I draw right now is going to be on layer 0. But now that I have all my layers set, I'm ready to close this dialog box. And the way you do that is you go over here to the X in the corner and just pick on the X. And that's going to close that. Now when I come back over here and I pick on the down arrow where my layers are, I'm going to see all the other layers that I have. And by picking on the visible layer, it's going to make the visible layer current. So if I pick on my line command, and I select a point, and I pick a point like this, and then I press escape, you can see, if I zoom in a little bit, scroll in with my wheel of my mouse, that uh, any line I drew right now is a red continuous line. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go pick on the down arrow and pick on hidden, pick a line, draw over here, and draw some things. And you can see that because hidden line, is the current layer that those are coming out to be blue dash lines. So I have two right there, two different lines. I'm going to pick on the down arrow. I'm going to pick center. Go pick on the line command. This should give me green center lines, and it is. Press escape. And uh, now the text layer I'm not going to use. That's where I would write some text. But I want to show you something else about this. I'm going to go back down here to the status bar. And there is uh, one of those tabs that says LWT. And what that is used for is to show the line weights on the, on the uh, screen. So I'm going to pick on LWT. And you'll notice that my red visible lines are showing up thicker. Now the reason for that is if I go back up here, you'll notice that when I made the visible lines, you'll remember that I set their line thickness to 0.6 millimeters. Everything else is set to default. Uh, default thickness is actually about 0.028, and so it's uh, about you know one third the thickness of what I have this visible line set to. And that's how you uh, get a drawing started. And uh, to recall, I started by setting up my units. The next thing I set were the limits of the drawing. Then I created my layers. And uh, other things that I, d that I did were to open up this menu bar up here. And of course, all I had to do was type menu bar at the command line, type 1, and press Enter. And the other thing I did was that I right-clicked on grid 
and checked unchecked uh, show icons so that I could see words down here. And that's the video. Thank you.